2020 edition of our annual conference, ECSS, the European Computer Science Summit. It is the main networking event for our community, the place where we gather each year to discuss common problems, to debate hot topics, to strengthen those connections that help each of us to overcome the ever-increasing challenges of our work. The team we have selected for this year conference is diversity, both in education and research. And in our field, we have a lot of space for improvement in terms of diversity, which usually is a source of strength and resilience in any context. And you will hear more on this subject during the various sessions of our conference with world leading scientists and national associations of informatics in Europe. This is uh, the 16th edition of our conference and the first, for the first time since the beginning, we run the workshop on the internet, a technology that the great artist David Bowie in a BBC interview of 1999 identified as, I quote him, accelerating and terrifying adding that the potential of what the internet is going to do to society, both good and bad, is unimaginable. And 20 years after this interview, we have witnessed a few months ago how critically good this technology can be, since it has allowed our society to survive in what otherwise could have had effects reminding centuries of a past we never want to come back again locked in our places. With the internet, we have been able to continue our activities. And this was made possible not only by the internet, but because of the ubiquitous presence of the information technology in our society. And as a scientific community, we are greatly proud of this because we are the researchers who study and advance the principles and the applications of the science, which makes this technology possible a science that in Europe we call informatics and is known also as computer science or computing in other parts of the world. We were therefore particularly happy to have had the acceptance to deliver the opening address of the conference for this year by Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth. Under a responsibility, the European Commission has just released the new Digital Education Action Plan, which beyond reaffirming the critical importance of an effective digital infrastructure for education, stresses, I quote from the document, the importance of computing education in schools to allow young people to gain a sound understanding of the digital world. Unfortunately, as it may happen at this highest level, or responsibility, a sudden change of her agenda prevented her to participate. And she has kindly asked that to her cabinet expert, Isidro Lasso Ballesteros, to replace her. The study of informatics since early years in school is as essential a pillar for the digital society as is the study of mathematics for the industrial society. And bringing informatics education in all school is a goal we have been working on since seven years now. You will hear more about this in the second talk of today by the president, by the chair of the Informatics for All Steering Committee, Wendy Hall. Then in the third talk, in the third talk, Giorgi Dimitrov, Deputy Head of Unit Innovation and DIT of the DG Education and Culture of the European Commission, will present us in more detail this ambitious plan for whose renewal he has been the team leader and whose implementation we are eagerly waiting for, so as to allow Europe to play at the same level of other big world actors in the digital field, from the Far East to the Far West. Finally, the fourth and the last talk of this morning session will be focusing on the need of research for informatics education in schools. We have not had the many decades of slow growth that other disciplines have had at their disposal to understand what when and how to teach the basis of our discipline in schools. Therefore, a huge effort in researching informatics education is needed, and Martin Zakariasen will present what they have learned in this area in the Information Technology University in Copenhagen. The final part of the scheduled time for each of these talks will be reserved for the first burning questions that I will manage together with my colleague Michael Kaspersen. 
We'll then have, in the very final part of the session, additional time for more questions and the general discussion. Before giving the floor to the first speaker, just an operational request, please write your question and to whom it is addressed in the Zoom query and answer box, which is located at the bottom of your Zoom window. If your question is selected for being asked live, please raise your electronic hand so that we can more quickly identify you. It is now my greatest pleasure to welcome Mr. Lasso Ballesteros as a replacement for the Commissioner Maria Gabriel and give her the floor, uh, give him the floor, sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much for the, for the introduction. First of all, I want to apologize that the Commissioner is not able to, to attend, as you have already mentioned. She tested again uh, positive for the COVID test and, and then she unfortunately cannot participate in any event this week. I will anyway um, read to you the, the speech that uh, she was planning to, to give to you with all the key messages and all the information that I hope will be very relevant to you. First of all, I want to say that it's a pleasure <coughs> to participate in this annual conference, replacing the Commission and Gabriel, especially as it is a, 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 a focus this year on a topic that is very dear to us, diversity, informatic research and education. I would like to thank Informatics Europe and its president, Enrico Nardelli, for giving us the honor of opening the first day of the European Computer Science Summit. This conference comes at the central moment for digital research and education. As COVID-19 made information and communication technologies and the digital transformation essential for us to carry on with our everyday lives. The crisis caused one of the most significant disruptions for work, education and training in the last decades. It has drastically changed the way we work, teach and learn, and it will surely have a lasting impact in the future. The European Commission has been working tirelessly to support member states and research and education institutions through this difficult time. Informatics Europe has been very active in supporting our efforts in this area. We have had fruitful discussions that help in better understanding the key role of computing and informatics research and education for boosting the level of digital competence in Europe. We are grateful for the very rich feedback because it has helped us develop an ambitious and inclusive vision for the future of digital research and education. Talking about the solutions of the Commission, we aim at increasing the capacity of information, research and education through a combined effort of the Digital Education Plan, the Digital Europe Programme and the Horizon Europe with both the ICT cluster and the new European Innovation Council. First, the Digital Education Plan. The Digital Education Plan communication for the period 2021-2027 was the result of a wide consultation where Informatics Europe was an active contributor. And the different actions proposed for the next seven years also reflect, reflect a wealth of experience gathered from the implementation of the current action plan and, of course, from the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Concretely, our action plan has two main priority areas. First, developing a high-performing digital education ecosystem, and second, enhancing digital skills and competencies for the digital transformation. About the second one, the digital skills and competencies are more important than ever, as the current crisis is demonstrating. These last few years demonstrated that basic digital skills are not just good to have, they have become a necessity, like water or electricity in the, in the, in the parks, now is ICT and the capacity to be able to manage it. In times of crisis and social disruption, those lacking digital skills are often excluded from everyday social practices or services from the government, the hospitals, etc. And this can also include the right to education. Everyone should have the opportunity to develop digital skills and competencies from basic to advanced, from early stage, early in, in their life, all throughout their life. To this end, we have included a focus in the new action plan on high quality and inclusive computing education in schools, introducing pupils to computing from an early age through innovative and motivating approaches to teaching in both formal and non-formal settings. Helps young people to gain a critical and hands-on understanding of the digital world. The new action plan on digital education will support the development of both basic 
and advanced digital skills. For example, bidding on the success of the EU Code Week and the Digital Opportunities Traineeship Schemes. Over the last seven years, nearly 10 million young people have participated in EU Code Week, which aims to bring computational thinking, coding, robotics, tinkering with hardware, computer science, and digital skills to as many people as possible in Europe and around the world. Besides enhancing the ICT professionals pipeline in the longer term, computer education can also impact positively on the number of girls pursuing IT-related studies in higher education and further on working in the digital sector or digital jobs in our economic sectors. In 2017, women made up 54% of all higher education students in the EU, but they are particularly underrepresented in digital sectors, holding only 17% of jobs. To conclude, in the area of education, the Commission will set up a European Digital Education Hub. The hub will serve as a central point boost boosting cross-sectoral collaboration and facilitating peer learning and best practices exchange. The second element of our efforts to support informatics research and education is the new Digital Europe program. This program is focused on building the strategic digital, digital capacities of the EU and on facilitating the wide deployment of digital technologies. With a planned overall budget of 8.2 billion euros, for the programming period, it will shape and support the digital transformation of EU society and economy. The Digital Euro program will boost investment in five main, main areas. First, supercomputer. Second, artificial intelligence. Third, cybersecurity. Four, and this is very relevant today, advanced digital skills with a budget of 600 million euros and will ensure a wide use of te digital technologies across the economies and society, including the, the SMEs, with a, a budget of 1.2 billion euros, using the Digital Innovation Hubs. The close collaboration between the Digital Euro Program and the Digital Education Action Plan will particularly aim at ensuring that the work on digital skills covers from basics to very advanced digital skills as we have seen in the, in the Digital Euro Plan. The final element, the third element of this strategy is the Horizon Euro Program that has two components that can contribute to this. The first one is the ICT cluster, the cluster four, and the second one is the new European Innovation Council. The Horizon Euro cluster four on digital technologies, manufacturing and space will bring together activities on digital, key enabling and space technologies to enable a faster and more profound digital industrial transformation across Europe. The universities are of course very much welcome to apply to the consortium to, to, to the calls. Some of the specific areas of interest to, the, to be funded under these uh, clusters calls will be quantum technologies, artificial intelligence, robotics, and advanced computing and big data. Horizon Europe also comes with a new European Innovation Council. The new European, European Innovation Council was set up to capitalize on Europe's science, innovative SMEs and startups, to compete in global markets, increasingly defined by new technologies, notably in the ICT area. The, a the EAC has pioneered a new, a new approach to support startups or spin-offs or spawn-outs that is called blended finance, that is combining grants with equity support. And that, that we have set up the first ever EU investment fund, the EAC fund, where we are taking directly equity from the, from the startups or the spin-offs. Is dedicated to directly investing in and accompany the growth of potential change again changing EU startups and SMEs. It has demonstrated its agility, actively involving women innovators, engaging a diversity of innovators from all fields, notably also in the ICT uh, sector, and countries contributing to reduce the innovation divide in Europe and supporting companies to attract over 4 billion euros from, of further investment from private sectors. This uh, last part of attracting external investors is as important or more than the direct funding that we provide. The successful implementation of these three elements will certainly position Europe in an excellent uh, position in terms of informatic research and education. Ladies and gentlemen, successful implementation of the Digital Education Action Plan, the Digital Europe Program, and Horizon Europe we rely on close partnerships and cooperation with a wide variety of stakeholders. We need Informatics Europe to continue informing us on the needs of the academics and research community in informatics. We are confident that by working together, 
we can boost computing research and education in schools and prepare our young people for a tech-driven world. We look forward to continued cooperation and active dialogue on these very important issues in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Lasso Ballesteros, and it's a pity that this virtual technology do not allow us to make an applause <laughs> to you, but you please consider uh, it as received, and uh, we are uh, really happy for the attention that uh, the Commissioner Gabriel is uh, giving to our association, to our coalition, and to the community of informatics uh, uh, research and education, and we confirm that our willingness, or our wish to continue cooperating to, to help you in uh, making Europe growth in this uh, uh, discipline that is fundamental for, uh, for, for the future. So I thank you a lot for your presence here, and you are, of course, uh, welcome to remain with us, and please bring our best wishes to Commissioner Gabriel for a prompt recovery from her, uh, her situation. Thanks again. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll give now the floor to um, Wendy Hall, uh, which is the chair of the informatics for all uh, steering committee and for her talk on uh, informatics education in school as the cornerstone of the digital society. And uh, we so welcome, Wendy. The floor is yours, and we will. Thank you, Enrico. You're going to show my slides, I think. Yes, here they are. Thank you so much. So we have to do the next slide thing. But um, hello, everybody, and um, uh, thank you very much uh, for the, for the the previous talk. It was very interesting. There's lots of things I'd like to come back on and talk about, but I have only 15 minutes to talk to you. So I need to get on with talking about informatics for all, which is an incredibly important part of um, uh, the previous uh, presentation. Um, so I'm very uh, privileged to be chair of this group, which has been in existence now for, I forget, but at three, two, three years, I would think, at least. Um, and it's, uh, it is in fact a coalition of several institute, several organizations. Uh, the current uh, members of the steering committee are uh, Judith Galiza um, and Andrew McGettrick, who uh, represent ACM Europe, uh, Michael Kasperson and Enrico Nardelli, um, IE president, and they're both on this call this morning, so will help me answer questions later. Uh, from CPIS, we have Gerald Fushtek and Ostea Trinconata, and Ulrich Locke, who comes to the meetings for Australia when she can't. And uh, recently we've been joined by IFIP, um, represented by Don Massey and Mary Webb. And we're also ably advised by Bobby Schnabel, who used to be the, who was at one point the CEO of the ACM, and also very instrumental in um, setting up computer science for all, or computing for all, I forget exactly what it was called, in the US, which the Obama administration picked up and ran with it. And of course, in the UK, we've had um, some success in persuading our government that computer science is very um, uh, important, uh, more important than it ever was. And I'll come back to that a bit later when I talk about teaching. So next slide, please, Enrico. As I say, we are a coalition. Um, it can, it's quite informal in a way. Um, uh, and we, the, the problem as... Uh, Enrico said earlier is that in Europe everybody every country has its own education regulations it's very difficult to set up as the European Commission knows a pan-European policy in education but we need to we want to try and uh, steer and encourage all the countries in Europe to move to a point where they think that they, that they are taking a serious attitude towards informatics for all education uh, informatics education in schools um, and the, um, we, st we started out by, um, it was in fact a, a, a collaboration between Informatics Europe. Do you want to go to the next slide, Enrico? Yes. Um, it's a coalition between, initially, between Informatics Europe and ACM Europe Council. I, I was probably chair of ACM Europe Council at the time, or close to, Enrico was on the board of Informatics Europe. And um, I think, I can't think, the date's not there, Enrico might remember, but we published this um, very extensive survey on informatics education in Europe, which actually tested the temperature, if you like, 
the, the um, reported on the status of informatics education, digital literacy and teacher training across Europe and, and created this interactive map. You could click on it and see the status of any country in Europe. Uh, fine, next slide please. Yes, Enrico. And we have developed since then, and as we've grown as a coalition, in order to be pa as pan-European as we can across all, um, all branches of informatics, not just you know, education, practitioners, um, across the board, uh, the industry, of course, that use, that need the skills. Um, there are, we have a two-tier strategy, and this is really, really important. I, ha I, couldn't, if you, I can't stress enough that first bullet point Informatics has to be seen as an important foundational discipline that should be taught to all students. This is not just about literacy in ICT. That's hugely important. And that's the second bullet point. Um, but actually, the first one is the most important because we are working to um, ensure that informatics is thought of as a discipline alongside maths and language. You know, mathematical skills and language skills and science skills generally. You'll see a bit more about that later. Uh, it isn't just a subset of science. We fear it is, it is worthy of being taught as a discipline in its own right in schools and not just um, in universities. And that it doesn't mean that every, just go back one, Enrico, it doesn't mean that every child is going to become a computer programmer, but every child should understand what that means. You just go back. And we also advocate our second tier of, tier of our strategy is that informatics should, of course, be integrated into education of other disciplines in the way that mathematics is. Think of it like mathematics. We, t we, we learn mathematics as a fundamental skill, but of course we have to use mathematics in many other different subjects, all the sciences. I personally, being a mathematician, think it is the most fundamental science of all. But anyway, that's my personal opinion. But... <laughs> I think that we, we, what we want is a, a, we want the future, future generations of school children to be educated in all aspects of informatics, both in terms of applying it and understanding it from a fundamental, you know, these are the, these are the fundamental skills I need in informatics, just like you have fundamental skills in maths and language and so on. So, yeah. Next slide, Enrico, thank you. So uh, we've held, we held, um, several two workshops the first one we had in as a physical workshop where we could do those sorts of things in february 2019 we had 50 participants at a workshop in brussels including speakers from the commission and as a, and we discussed what we needed to do and as a result of that um the wonderful enrico drafted a <laughs> declaration <laughs> which we we launched when we had a there was a meeting in rome wasn't that? that's right anyway it was oh, we, we were in rome right we were in rome for ecss <laughs> last year and and this is when we um uh drew up the declaration and it has now been signed by well when enrico did the slides this weekend did this put uh, it was 262 institutions you can see it on the on the Informatics for All website, which is supported by ACM and Informatics Europe um, in terms of the development. And, uh, and it's in, now in 12 languages as well. Uh, and the, wonder, the thing about this um, declaration is it just says to people, and I love this phrase, to ask institutions, national and international, to exercise their moral suasion power so the principles of informatics are included as part of the school curriculum at all levels. That is our mantra. Next slide, please. And our second workshop, um, we were just, it was March this year, just going into COVID, so we had to put it online. But in fact, it was a great success, as we're finding with a lot of conferences and workshops. We had about 55 participants again, but they were from really from across the board in Europe. It wasn't that people could, only people who could travel to Brussels, of course. This was about particularly, um, and we, uh, we, George was uh, was at the conference uh, to, to to demonstrate our support for the European Commission as they develop their plans that you just heard about, and to influence that, um, to discuss how best the European scientific community can support the EU moving forward on this agenda. And you can see all the information about that at our and on our website. Next slide, please, Enrico. So, what are we doing now? We've we've stated our case, and we are already influencing. European Commission's agenda, which is fantastic, working closely with them to do that. 
So we feel that the two things are really important going forward. One is we can't develop a curriculum for every a pan-European school curriculum for mathematics because every country will teach in their own way. So we're aiming to produce a framework. Um, and this has to be seen at a, as a higher level than a curriculum document, but should not, in order to offer guidance and challenge those who are designing curricula. So we want to set out our stall and say, if you're teaching informatics, these are the sorts of things you've got to include in your curricula. That's our, uh, our priority going forward. And the other one, next slide, please, Enrico. <clears throat> Uh, the one is teacher education um, and this is I wanted to refer back to this in the, what's happened in the UK um, oh, in what like seems centuries ago before Covid and before uh, you know the current government and so many things different but uh, Michael Gove in David Cameron's government changed the um, computer science curriculum in schools we moved from ICT to computer science and so our uh, the secondary school education moved to computer science rather than ICT what we didn't do was train the teachers, right? That was a lesson learnt, and we've had to retrospectively. So in fact, our numbers for doing computer science have gone down, particularly amongst girls, which is the, what we didn't want to happen. So the government has had to re retrospectively put a lot of money into teacher training for computer scientists. And so we've decided uh, that Informatics for All, our second uh, major activity going forward, will be looking at providing um, materials for training teachers in computer science and we're going to uh, we're planning a workshop for the new year it could almost certainly be online of course to discuss that and the beauty of online is you know perhaps we'll hold it on a Saturday and we can actually have teachers who come to <laughs> who can attend and, and talk to, uh, and uh, also people who do teach training uh, to widen our scope so watch this space uh, two more slides I think next slide Enrico uh, two other things that we're involved with. This one, Enrico leads us on. Um, we are we are pushing uh, the PISA science framework, which of course is um, part of the OECD, um, to get informatic informatics for all is represented on the PISA group, looking at developing again uh, informatics as a science within the curriculum going forward, as a science as a separate discipline, and they're producing a strategic vision report. Um, uh, uh, and, and looking at uh, the work slowed down a bit, I think, because of COVID, but, but looking at how they reflect informatics as a, a new area within their um, assessment framework. So we're um, uh, ably represented by Enrico in that group, and we look for further progress going forward. And the final slide, uh, this was uh, Michael Kasperson's um, efforts here for this, the ITSI conference was uh, supposed to be in, in Norway uh, in June. Of course, it was held virtually. We supported it um, through ACM Europe and, and um, Informatics for All um, via Best Paper and Doctoral Consortium, Best Paper Awards and Doctoral Consortium, and members of Informatics for All were there to serve on the organising committee. Um, there were, it was, it was a record number of uh, registrations it was completely online and it was i believe a great success and we look forward as um you know four organizations together in this coalition to supporting these types of conferences going forward to um, better explain what we're trying to do and um, get more and more people interested in our activities so watch this space for workshops and thank you very much enrico for ably being my slide master <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy, for your presentation. Sharply on time, very good. And uh, we now we now have uh, uh, five minutes to get the the first burning question, and um, uh, then, uh, then 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 we can uh, go continue with the next speaker. Actually, there is there is uh, a question in the in the query and answer box by Simona Motonia. Which is a question, well, I can read it. It's that Simone is oh. asking, is there any progress across European countries considering informatics education in the last two to three years? Are countries responding to the necessity of teaching ICT? Okay, the first thing I'm going to say to Simona is we are not about teaching ICT. That is the rhetoric we want to change. 
okay? If you want to teach, that, that's, that's not what we're about. We're about teaching a scientific discipline and applying that scientific discipline in all other subjects. We are not teaching ICT, okay? So that's the absolute first thing to say. Has there been any progress? Um, it's very hard to judge. We did that survey, what, three years ago now on the map. Uh, we haven't updated it. Um, and it's something we should look at, at, at reviewing uh, in terms of progress. But I think um, your question implies, unless you just use the term, you know, in a, in, a, in a rush to type your question, I think we have a quite a long way to go to persuade the community <laughs> that this is not about teaching ICT. Right, this is, and that's why it's important that we get our curriculum framework out and, and materials for teaching informatics. I said computer science teachers, I think it's informatics teachers, computer science teachers, because we, we've got to, we want to start thinking of informatics as a scientific discipline. Um, so we, I think we have still quite a long way to go, but with the support of the commission um, and uh, governments around uh, Europe, which is what we're trying to do, then I think we can make progress. Oh, thanks, Wendy. And I, I would like to add uh, to Simona that if you go to the website of Informatics for All and uh, look at the page for uh, uh, 2019 uh, workshop, uh, you can find the up to date until the time picture of the situation of informatics education. Uh, we um, have not done a further survey after uh, that one, but we, we know that the DG Education is planning to, to do a new survey on it, and we are, of course, available to contribute uh, to this. Um, and I, I, I think, I hope not to, 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 to remember wrongly, that after that survey in France, they did some more progress uh, toward uh, uh, establishing informatics uh, as a formal subject of teaching in school, because uh, it is important uh, to understand, uh, uh, to distinguish between what uh, uh, government may announce and what actually is implemented in, in the level uh, uh, in, in the school level. Um, so we have uh, a couple of more questions. Wendy, you can see there. I so guess. Gregor Engels, um, COVID-19 has shown there's a big problem with digital techniques at our schools. Can we use this situation somehow to improve the role of informatics in school education? I hope so, Gregor. I truly hope so, because I think one of the things about COVID has shown us all that we um, we can exist in a digital world in ways that we, we didn't think were possible. And um, it will be post this dreadful crisis, a new normal going forward in terms of how much we do digitally and how much we teach online. I think universities will be, um, will really embrace this in many different ways. Schools clearly are going to still be, uh, going to be sending our children to physical schools. But the, I don't know what it's, so I, I do think that um, the, the, there's a focus on the digital in COVID. What I'm noticing is a huge problem with the supply of laptops. Um, I believe that they are, there's a, we just, um, I just found that last week our government can't get laptops to get into, to get more laptops into schools because there is a, of course, everybody around the world has been buying up laptops. I gather there's a long waiting list at Apple for new laptops. And um, so I think short term, we have a bit of a laptop crisis because people were moving away from them onto other devices. And now, of course, because of the demand at home in business, people working from home and um, for teaching on, online in, in education, um, we've got a bit of a <laughs> crisis, I think, over the winter of laptop supply and guess where they come from but anyway that's another issue altogether and I'm, uh, so I think there will be long-term consequences of this absolutely but we do have a little bit of a short-term crisis I'm afraid uh, and Olive, Olivier Goletti what is the plan for the i for all framework will there be a call for participation um, we have really just started this. Um, CEPIS were leading on this, and we just recently, um, I th um, Enrico and Michael can correct me if I'm wrong, very recently we've just put, put together a, a steering group for this, and then absolutely 
our intention is to be very inclusive about um, how people contribute to this framework. Um, Enrico, do you want, or Michael, do you want to say any more about that? Um, yes, I mean, as you said, we have just started. We have not yet had the first meeting of the committee. We just uh, agreed on when to first meet. And after we initiate discussing how to organize, uh, of course, I mean, involvement of the community is uh, is uh, is needed. Is, is is absolutely needed. Everybody of us that has worked on the field in informatics education understand very well that. Um, you cannot do really informatic education research without being on the field with the teachers and with the community involvement. So I'm sorry I have to to to, to interrupt this uh, interesting so discussion. Because Judith has asked if she could say something, but I guess you haven't got time for that then. No, unfortunately, we, we don't have time now, but we will have time at, at, at the end. So Yes, and that question from Jayak, actually, I might... Don't, I don't think I can stay on to the end, but can, the question from Jack, I'm just going to take that, Jack Villo. Sorry, Enrico. Okay. I'll to go in a minute. But the who are the leading people to teach and follow uh, in physics someone like Feynman? I absolutely think we need to celebrate um, examples of famous computer scientists as long as that we're, di we said di you know, we take diversity very seriously in this across the board, not just gender, but in terms of um where they come from and the back their background i do think we, we and that's actually a good idea folks on informatics for all we should start doing some bios of famous really you know really well-known computer scientists yeah. uh, that, that uh, and maybe a Feynman person will bubble to the top that's a really really good point actually <laughs> yeah we will come back uh, later to this issue of communication dissemination because it is as important as teacher education. Okay, so um, I'm sorry to interrupt. This is my the, the bad part of my of my duty. So thank you again, uh, Wendy, for thank uh, you, Enrico. This. I'm going to listen to uh, Georgia and, and I have to go, but it's been fabulous. Thank you for inviting me to take part. Okay, and Michael thanks. and you will handle questions about informatics for all later. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so thanks. Virtual applause to you also and uh, I now give the floor to uh, George Dimitrov deputy head of uh, unit innovation and EIT uh, that will of the DG uh, education and culture that will present the renewed digital education plan that uh, he, he was uh, renewed that was uh, updated under his uh... then, yeah. yeah okay so I will stop my sharing so that you can share this screen okay. yes Hi, yes, hello. Uh, good morning to the to the community. Uh, it's a fascinating discussion that you've already started. So I would have uh, also listened with with pleasure because I'm always um, you know very very uh, much enjoying this this uh, conversation with you. I was just thinking while you were introducing that um, uh, it will be my probably third uh, or even fourth contribution to to your gathering, which of course uh, is a great great privilege, which I cannot. Uh, uh, stress enough, but it makes me a little bit of a serial uh, suspect or a usual suspect. I hope that I'm not going to give you the same thing that you that you are, uh, you know, getting from. Uh, but um, yes, I mean, I, I just want to to hope that today I can uh, present to you something a little bit more um, novel because we have been talking about some plans, and now we can uh, we can present to you something. Uh, thank you very much for, for inviting us here, um, uh, and uh, of course um, you have heard already from uh, our cabinet uh, the main political lines and the main, um, let's say, directions of, of how the Commission sees overall the importance of, um, of um, uh, computer science or informatics in the big picture. What I would like to do now uh, today with you is to zoom a little bit uh, onto the Digital Education Action Plan, which we have now adopted on the 30th of uh, um, September. In fact, it's, uh, well, it's um, less than four weeks ago. And uh, I will uh, share my screen. Um, I will walk you through some uh, slides which we have prepared for, for this. And then uh, I will try to zoom uh, a little bit more on some which I call selected actions that would be more interesting for you. Um, because I don't think that um, 
let's say everything that we're putting on the table is uh, equally relevant and perhaps there are some things that are more interesting for you. So I have tried to customize this a little bit uh, at this stage. Um, now um, sharing, um, sharing my, my screen. Yes. Um, let me now just, okay. So you should be able to see, yes. um, to see my yes. screen and uh, let me then just, uh, just get started. So um, my name is Georgi Dimitrov. I work in the European Commission in DG Education and Culture. Uh, my current job is a Deputy Head of Unit for Innovation and the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. Um, but I'm also... Or, uh, or I had the privilege to be the project team leader for the new Digital Education Action Plan, which we um, presented. And um, basically, um, the first thing that I want to start with is uh, to say, okay, so uh, what is the what is the Digital Education Action Plan? Um, um, this is, in fact, um, our concerted effort uh, to provide for a EU level framework for digital education over the. Uh, uh, periods that I have indicated here, um, which is basically 2021 and 2027. Um, this is the programming period of the European Union. Um, for the case that you wonder why this uh, time frame, it is equal to the duration of uh, programs such as Erasmus or Horizon Europe or Digital Europe programs that you are um, familiar with. And um, we have put a subtitle to the Digital Education Action Plan um, resetting education and training for the digital age, which is very different uh, if you read it in other languages, of which now there are, um, I believe, 23 different um, translations. So I invite you to consult the Digital Education Action Plan in your language uh, for the case that this is one uh, European Union official language, um, except Gaelic, I, I need to add. But um, what I would also uh, like to say is that um, the Digital Education Action Plan consists of two main documents. If you go to the QR code, um, you can find them. Uh, on the one side, there is the um, uh, communication of the European Commission, uh, Commission which uh, my colleague already um, uh, mentioned um, earlier. And on the other side, there is the staff working document, which is the evidence base and basically the data um, which led us to um, conclude or to propose what we have um, what we have proposed. Then um, the next uh, the next slide uh, is meant to just um, recap uh, a little bit the political context we are into. Um, first, I would like to start with the fact that uh, the digital education action plan and the new one was uh, something that has been already planned for. Um, in the political uh, priorities of our new, uh, well, now not really brand new, but um, our commission uh, president, Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, so already last summer, um, uh, did she, uh, in fact, indicate that this is something which is a priority for her. Second, um, I would like to add that um, the Digital Education Action Plan is also uh, now an integral part of the vision for a Europe fit for the digital age. In fact, uh, in the new commission, uh, in the current commission, we have uh, an, an executive vice president who leads on all matters related to digital. This is uh, Miss Margarete Vestager, um, very well known as a competition commissioner, but um, she is an, the, the executive vice president and she's also leading on other um, uh, uh, policies which are related to digital transformation. And um, you can imagine that there is quite a number of those, but the, the whole point here is that we are looking into a more coherent, a more um, uh, strategic um, uh, portfolio on digital transformation for Europe. Third, we are building on the first lessons that we have from the Digital Education Action Plan. I will not spend too much time on this one, uh, apart from saying that um, this was the very first attempt of the Commission to address digital education in an um, integrated manner. Uh, and there are lots of lessons that we have made and have included into the, um, into the current action plan. Um, very importantly, it was already mentioned by Wendy and um, um, it was mentioned by, in fact, by uh, all the speakers, uh, by you, Enrico, as well, um, is that um, while we were uh, working on this, um, of course, COVID came. So this, this is a game changer, as we, as we believe. And last but not least, uh, COVID led to uh, unprecedented um, uh, effort of the European Union, which is called the Next Generation EU, which is essentially um, a huge investment package, uh, which is currently in finalization of uh, more than 670 billion euros, uh, composed of grants and loans, 
and this new uh, um, next generation package will um, invest through the recovery and resilience funds into the well the recovery um, uh, of the of the different uh, member states and we believe that education and training is a very important subject to be prioritized and we believe that uh, there are good chances that it will be as well um, so this is the context into, into which we are sort of um, working and um, we organized a number of stakeholder consultations. Uh, I would like to hear, um, extend my thanks to the Informatics for All and Informatics for Europe community, uh, personally also to, to um, Enrico, uh, to all the different uh, stakeholders that you have and um, uh, for being very engaged in this stakeholder consultation, not only since um, the beginning in March and in April, but also especially uh, in the open public consultation part when we opened this to the wider society. Um, I think that um, the, um, let's say the, um, the amount of, of, um, of uh, consultations that we organized speaks to, to let's say the, um, the breadth of the topic and my next slide in fact will, will show you a little bit of, um, of the data behind it. Um, in the open public consultation, we have uh, received more than 207, um, uh, sorry, 2,700 contributions. Um, and um, we have um, more than uh, 130 position papers. But in addition to those, we had also uh, the so-called roadmap. So in total, more than 200 position papers from large organizations, small organizations. I, I cannot tell you anything about those because of data privacy, but... Um, it's, it, it really is, is a very uh, diverse and, and rich uh, source of information. We're very, very glad and, and grateful for that. What you see on the slide is the, um, the total distribution in terms of uh, countries, but also personal capacity. So people responding in personal capacity and people responding in organizational capacity. So if one word would be describing this, then it is diversity. And in fact, this speaks about the... Um, the problem that we're facing, which is digital, uh, digital education, which involves many, many different uh, topics. So what are, the, what are perhaps briefly some of the main findings? Um, nothing that will come to you uh, as a revelation or, or a, a revolutionary um, conclusion. Um, we have seen that uh, with COVID, basically many people, in fact, uh, uh, for more than 60% in our contributions, um, for many of them, this was the first time they experienced distance and online learning, which we define as just one mode of digital education. Um, in the emergency, we have seen lots of innovation, um, but also a lot of suboptimal practices, basically taking the analog practice into the digital, um, which of course does not always yield the results that one may expect. Um, summa summarum, we have seen the need to boost digital capacity and competences of, of uh, of uh, essentially all levels of education. Um, despite the, the different perceptions between education and training staff and, and also um, uh, parents on the other side, because um, we also reached out uh, to, to parents, in fact, or rather parents were interested in our, uh, in our um, uh, open public consultation, more than 90% of the, of the, um, of the respondents um, uh, see the COVID crisis as a turning point for um, the use of technology in education. But on the other si side, uh, of course, where there are opportunities, there are also a lot of challenges. One very important point is uh, already I mentioned um, earlier by, by Wendy, the issue of, um, of access uh, to devices. But um, um, this is a, a deeper socioeconomic problem, which in fact gets, uh, it gets exacerbated by, by COVID. And we see it uh, with, uh, with regard to devices, but also with regard to connectivity, with regard to infrastructure. So these are big, big problems that we're also seeing coming out from the, um, from the COVID crisis and continuing, in fact. Um, some issues um, related to the mental health of those involved in digital learning, uh, lack of face-to-face -face guidance and, uh, and um, um, lack of structure, if you like, uh, for, for uh, this type of new, uh, new normal in education. Um, and in fact, um, we see um, uh, a number of key enabling factors that um, will be required to make uh, education 
successful in the in the digital age and in particular if it is delivered through uh, through through digital means now the question which we are asking uh, ourselves is of course um, what uh, can we do uh, because i um, think that i have perhaps said it every time i speak with you that um, the competences of the commission in the field of education are very limited and uh, we have to be very careful in terms of the subsidiarity principle and what we are allowed to do and we appreciate a lot the different, um, uh, let's say, needs and challenges that there are in the member states. But this, of course, is, is first and foremost member states business. Nevertheless, um, where we can uh, perhaps uh, put uh, some uh, value added in, in, in to work, and this is, of course, the expectations of our, uh, of our stakeholders, is in terms of teacher competence development, um, in, in terms of connectivity and infrastructure, support, um, to education and training institutions to develop strategies, um, measures to disadvantage groups, and um, also online resources. Um, I would like to, to quote this uh, teacher here, which I have on the slide uh, speaking to us, that um, the key last lesson of the COVID crisis is that digital education should no longer be viewed as an island of its own, but considered an integral part of uh, all education and training. The key aspects of the action plan um, uh, are um, to, to, to keep it brief. Uh, first, that we are taking an integra integrated approach or integrated look into technology use of education. Um, the topic of technology use in education is at least 50 years old, I think, um, and it has gone through a lot of diff different um, titles, if you like, being uh, uh, technology enhanced learning, being um, e-learning and um, further down the road um, in the 80s. Uh, so this is not a new topic, but what is very important is that um, we are reaching level of maturity and also a le level of um, technology dispersion, which allows us to bring together those two different parts, the technological aspect and also the, um, if you like, the pedagogical competences. So we are uh, looking at digital education as something which involves technology use on the one side and also the skills aspect as two parts of the same coin. Uh, we are proposing to extend the action plan um, beyond formal education to include now lifelong learning. This is different from the first action plan because we don't think that digital education stops at the, at the boundaries of the formal, but it, in fact, it, um, it can support a lot. Also the, the constant uh, lifelong learning process um, and also, I have mentioned it already, we are proposing a uh, duration of 21 to 27, which first is longer than the last one, but secondly, and much more importantly, is aligned with the programming period of the European Union. Um, you have heard from, um, from Ms. Mr. Balesteros that um, all these different programs which are in place, Horizon Europe, Digital Europe, Erasmus, they are all contributing in different ways to the objectives. And the point here is to make this a more... Um, if you like, a coherent and a more synergetical exercise so that this is easier also for those that, um, in fact, use the programs, um, because we have to always think about how this uh, is used by the beneficiaries, um, be, be them institutional uh, organizations or, or member states. Um, I have mentioned that um, with the um, 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 Europe uh, fit for the digital age, let's say, uh, with our uh, executive vice president, Margarete Vestager, we're looking at digital ed education as something which um, is seen more and more as a strategic priority, in fact, for, um, for Europe, and where um, we have to also think about and address the, the questions that come our way uh, from, the, from the digital transformation more generally. Um, and very, very importantly, I mentioned it already, and perhaps less relevant for you, but extremely important for policymakers uh, across the member states, is the question of the recovery and resilience plans. Uh, resilience plans where the, um, the European member states, the European Union member states will have a lot of different opportunities to, um, in fact, um, um, invest in different parts of digital education from infrastructure through um, uh, digital equipment to digital skills for teachers. And this is very, very important for us. So we are repeating it at every single occasion because it's, it's uh, unprecedented. That it has never been there before, let's say. Um, finally, the point on the synergies between the funding instruments is very important for us. Um, let me just say that uh, the Digital Education Action Plan does not have a 
separate uh, funding program behind it, but it in fact uses the funding programs of different um, uh, the, the different funding programs. Excuse me. Uh, I'm in my home office, so you can hear some some uh, sirens. Apologies for that. Um, uh, some uh, of the guiding principles that we have put um, as a underpinning uh, the Digital Education Action Plan. Um, let me just uh, mention high quality uh, and inclusive digital education, a very important uh, uh, objective for us. Um, we are also of the opinion that transforming education for the digital age is a task for the entire society, meaning it needs to involve, for example, the private sector, the civil society. It cannot be outsourced only to education and training authorities. Um, also, the question of connectivity, equipment, organizational capacity is instrumental. Um, these are things which are basically absolutely uh, necessary in order to be able to speak about effective digital education. Um, already mentioned uh, earlier is the question of teachers and trainers. And um, of course, the issue of digital literacy from basic digital skills to advanced digital skills is, is, is instrumental. So uh, I would not spend too much time on, on those because you can also see the, um, uh, see the action plan in fact, but um, perhaps um, to, to show to you the um, two strategic priorities which uh, we have identified on the one side, uh, fostering the development of a high performing digital education ecosystem. And here, we are speaking about all these elements that need to be in place uh, so that um, we have, um, um, let's say, effective and inclusive digital education. And those elements are, for example, infrastructure, equipment, connectivity, digitally competent educators, uh, high quality content and instructional design for digital education. Um, we also need um, um, high quality research and uh, peer learning. Um, in order to stimulate policy cooperation. On the, uh, on the other hand, um, the uh, second priority, and uh, I have not enumerated them, but they are on the left-hand side uh, of your screen, uh, is the question of how to enhance digital skills and competences. So these are the two major priority areas, high-performing digital education ecosystem and how to enhance digital skills and competences for the digital transformation. Um, I am not going to present to you the, the, um, uh, all the different actions. I have just pre um, prepared for you an overview of the first priority area as well as the second, so that um, you can see what is under each. Um, in the first one, uh, we are um, talking about the so-called um, enabling fa factors for successful digital education. And what is behind this is that we would like to uh, launch a strategic dialogue with the member states at um, uh, different levels, but including the, the highest political levels on what makes uh, successful digital education. This is a first, it has never been done before. Um, we need to see how it will be developed, but this is a very, very important aspect, which um, is to, to support the, the idea and the objectives of digital education at the highest, uh, at the highest level and to speak also with the member states about this, um, of course, to the extent that the treaties allow us. We are also proposing specific measures related to online and distance learning, in particular for primary and secondary. This is where the, I believe the, the demand is, is highest and uh, where we see the experiences uh, telling us that work is, is needed. Um, we have identified the question of digital education content as a strategic question. And um, we are, for example, looking at the leading platforms of this world uh, in terms of um, online learning. And uh, we, um, uh, we see that um, the, the, the five top ones are not coming from, from Europe. So we are asking uh, ourselves questions, what can be done in order to uh, improve the relevant positioning of uh, uh, EU uh, digital education content? Um, and this is behind this uh, action. Uh, briefly, we have also some ideas for connectivity and digital equipment, um, but uh, also for how to support digital transformation plans of um, different education institutions. So this is uh, from primary through the entire continuum uh, with adult education even involved in this. Uh, and yes, ethical guidelines on artificial intelligence for educators. But in the interest of time, I would just um, uh, briefly go to the second priority area, which is about um, 
enhancing digital skills and competences. And here we are talking mostly about skills and competences, obviously uh, going through measures uh, tackling disinformation, digital competence um, updates, um, uh, the so-called digital skills certificate, um, and uh, you have you have them in front of uh, in front of you. Um, let me now focus a little bit on what is mostly interested for you, I believe, and this is where I have made an effort to uh, to perhaps um, uh, say um, say a few things that could be mostly interesting for for you, given also our discussions with uh, with you of the last uh, well years, I should say, in this case. Um, we, you have probably seen that we have identified um, in the um, communication um, specific uh, examples where we believe that um, computing and informatics education is, is critical. And um, we, um, we are saying that uh, in order to, to thrive into a technology world, uh, we need a digitally competent uh, workforce and a growing digital talent pool. And informatics education is uh, allowing young people to gain a critical and hands-on understanding of the digital world. Uh, moreover, informatics is intertwined with digital literacy, with critical thinking and problem solving. And therefore, uh, by incorporating it into the curriculum, we would boost uh, basic digital skills and we improve also, we would improve a variety of, of students' transversal skills. So there are lots of uh, side effects and side benefits of that. Uh, of the benefits, um, speaking of benefits, uh, we, we also, um, we should also include pedagogical, um, uh, pedagogical aspects, while of course at the same time we have different societal and economic advantages. Um, and besides improving, for example, creativity, critical thinking or problem solving, uh, we think that informatics education could help young people to be creators and not just passive users of technology. Um, so there are important societal benefits that we see from this and uh, you can imagine that for politicians who are interested in questions such as disinformation uh, or fake news, um, these are very important arguments. The economics benefits um, of informatics education uh, obviously come from the fact that the skills basis is improved, uh, even though these are totally different things, the, um, the, let's say the informatics education and the digital skills, but the basis is improved and then um, of course, if you improve the basis, you, you have a higher chance to get further down the line, better um, pipeline of, of talent in, in things like data analysis, cybersecurity, even coding, which of course um, is, is something which is not uh, any longer as new, but highly important. Uh, and these are things which are in demand, of course, um, on the labor market. So this is very important, politically speaking, as well. So it is for this reason that we, uh, as a matter of vision, if you like, put a um, specific attention into supporting students' uh, computational um, thinking and the understanding of informatics and uh, the understanding of the digital world uh, as, a, as a fundamental competence, if you like. Um, in order to do this properly, obviously, there are lots of different challenges. And here, for example, one way of uh, how we have thought about um, uh, addressing this uh, and we have to always consider one thing here before I, I just uh, say this, we have to always consider that um, we are operating in the subsidiarity principle. In some languages, uh, there is a very nice proverb. I'm a big fan of proverbs. And uh, in, in one language that I speak, uh, it says, you need to leave the church in the, in the village. And um, basically this is very important for me to stress because there are, mm, there are things that we can do. And then there are things that we uh, probably cannot do but of the things that we can do, let me just perhaps address some. So first, uh, what we have put forward um, is um, the, uh, the possible proposal for a council recommendation on improving the provision of digital skills in education and training. And here, um, our objective um, would be to provide a more coherent vision and shared language uh, on uh, high quality computing and informatics education to students uh, in Europe. Um, the uh, activities that we are that we are looking into is um, is uh, let's say exchange of best practice on instructional methods, um, including high quality computing and informatics education. I believe the framework that you mentioned could be a very interesting um, uh, tool. Then uh, to promote the use of uh, EU tools that we already have today, but also to foster the dialogue with the industry. And uh, some of the activities that uh, will help us to arrive there is to um, work on specific studies. Uh, they, they are not mentioned here, but I will just uh, mention them to you. 
um, in order to feed into this process, um, because this is a, essentially it's a political process where the Commission puts forward a uh, policy proposal to the member states, and it is up to the member states whether they take it or they don't. And um, so we, we propose to feed this process inter alia with two specific studies. First, um, a study that um, will update um, a study on computational thinking, uh, and this should be done by the end of next year, uh, by November, December 2021, uh, in close collaboration with the GRC, the Joint Research uh, Center of the European Commission. And a second important study is um, uh, by 2022, we would like to carry out a mapping of computer science education in compulsory education in Europe, uh, that is in the European Union. And um, we would like to um, do this uh, most likely through Eurydice, which is a network um, uh, within the Commission, but also in the member states. And um, obviously, um, this um, is with the objective to identify trends and, and challenges with a view to propose a common set of principles to improve the overall quality and inclusiveness of, uh, of um, computer, of, um, of informatics education in the European Union. So that's one specific example. And then the second specific example that I would like to share with you uh, is the update of the European Digital Competence Framework. Um, allow me to say that this is a highly um, um, regarded and well-established uh, digital competence framework by now. Um, and um, it is used by a lot of different member states. We have proposed in the, um, in the action plan that we will update it um, and um, we, you, you see here some of the areas which, um, which uh, we cover for the time being, the five areas. Um, but uh, in particular here, what we believe is that um, we can update the, the digital competence framework also with view of the lessons learned um, through, the, um, through the informatics and computer science um, experience made so far. And uh, the objective would be to come back to something that you mentioned earlier, to empower educators and individuals to become confident and competent users of digital technologies. We have focused a little bit more on AI for this action, but um, we are open to, let's say, consider uh, also how this can be perhaps um, made a little bit more round. Um, obviously, there is a lot of political attention to the, to the role of AI, but as we said, um, the informatics is at the, at the core of this, so perhaps um, we can we can exchange on, on that one, uh, one as well. But the, the, the main purpose is, of course, to empower educators and individuals to become uh, confident and competent users of um, digital technology. Um, in the interest of time, uh, I would like to finalize and to conclude with uh, one last slide, which uh, is very important for, for us. Uh, not the slide itself, but the idea behind it. And uh, I. I am putting this uh, there, um, even though it does not have direct uh, re relation to the um, informatics uh, topic as such, or the computer science, but it is really about what the EU can do in this field, uh, or let's say in fields like this, if, if I can put it like this. So we are proposing uh, as a part of the action plan to uh, create a European digital education hub, um, which um, is uh, meant to reinforce coordination and cooperation in the EU. As I said, um, this um, uh, whole topic of digital education is not necessarily uh, something where the European Union has um, decades of experience, so it is relatively novel um, in comparison to some other uh, policy areas. So it is very, very important that we address the topic in a coherent fashion and we make as much use as possible of the diversity and wealth of knowledge that there exists in, in, in the EU. For this reason, we are supporting uh, this idea to, propose, to create a hub on the one side to support a network of uh, national advisory services to exchange experience and good practice, but also to link national and regional digital education initiatives. We believe this is very, very important to do um, in order to, to have a more coordinated approach. Secondly, we would like to uh, use this hub to monitor better the implementation of the action plan and to share uh, more effectively the good practices, which come not only from the action plan, obviously from it as well, but also from the uh, different research and innovation activities that we are supporting in this field. And you have heard from our cabinet, uh, some of the higher level ideas. So we believe that this could be structured perhaps in a way which is a bit more effective in terms of sharing and communicating to, to the stakeholders. 
Third, we would like to support cross-sector collaboration and new models for the exchange of digital education content, including common standards. Um, and last but not least, this is a little bit more down the road, but uh, even in the Commission, we are allowed to dream sometimes. Um, we are talking about a more agile development of policy and practice in digital education by being a think and do tank and engaging stakeholders in, um, let's say, formats which are perhaps not the traditional ones, but which are highly effective, such as uh, hackathons, of which we have already won, which is highly successful. And this is the digital education hackathon. So this is my last slide. Excuse me, um, Enrico, I, I, um, I run a little bit over time, but uh, I thought that it is important to take the time and to speak a little bit more in detail. And of course, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Georgi, for your presentation. And um, uh, first of all, we have already a couple of questions, but before uh, giving the floor to, to those questions that I think you can read in the query and answer, um, I just would, would like to, to, to renew uh, our um, uh, availability as an association and as a coalition to contribute to the studies that you will uh, um, start uh, uh, since uh, this year, next year, the one on uh, computational thinking with uh, the GRC and the one on uh, mapping computer science education with uh, Eurydice, because I mean, you know that uh, we, we, we have been working, are working on this. So uh, whenever, uh, I mean, we understand that the commission want to work with their own internal uh, supporting organization, but uh, we, we, are, we are able to give our contribution whenever uh, it is uh, it, it is possible. Um, so I I think we can now take a, uh, one or two questions. The first one was by Gregor Engels. Uh, can uh, you read? I think Georgi and yes, yes. I, I have uh, I have opened now the Q and A um, chat box, and then I'm going through them. Um, so let's start with Gregor. Yes. Um, so many thanks for the question. Um, Yes, um, uh, maybe there is an implicit assumption. I have uh, learned through the process so far that, um, um, first of all, we should never assume. And then secondly, in fact, this exact topic, digital education and how it works is, is absolutely not clear at all. And I think that, that it, it is a very important question in the sense of uh, the framing of the topic. And um, we have actually provided uh, a definition in the um, action plan itself. Um, but also in the, in the staff working document on, on a little bit more in terms of details. Now, um, whether this requires new di didactical concepts, um, I think that probably the, um, the, my answer to this would be um, it would require some adaptation of didactical competences uh, um, and concepts uh, for, for sure, sorry, didactical concepts and uh, obviously pedagogical competences. I think that to some extent it would require an adaptation of this. I am a little bit more um, in, of the opinion that um, what we are proposing here is, is, is perhaps a pragmatic uh, framing of, of uh, digital education, one based on the fact that there is a maturity of technology, there's a ubiquity of internet access, there is a, there is a let's say, wide um, availability of devices, even though this is not sufficient. Uh, and on the other hand, that we have well-identified um, uh, experiences that... Um, let's say digital education also improves digital skills and competences. So for me, the question of the, of the, um, of the concept to, to come back to it is perhaps a little bit less relevant. Uh, I think that there is a great deal of, of research that goes into explaining uh, what it is, um, but uh, um, this, is where, um, this is where perhaps, uh, let's say, you know, we are very happy also to learn from, from, from the experts to the, to the extent possible. Um, I'm going through the through the through the questions. Um, yes, yes. Uh, perhaps Angel uh, is asking. Um, well, basically, he's commenting that uh, there is no formal education in Spain on informatics and claims uh, on high quality computing. Well, you can read that. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we are not. First of all, we are not considering to dictate anything. Uh, I I hope that. Uh, that's clear by now that the Commission uh, cannot really dictate anything in terms of, uh, of education. And I want to be just as clear as I can get on that one, because it will save us a lot of discussions in the, in the, um, also in the political environment so that member states do not misunderstand the intentions of, um, of, of the, the Commission. What we are proposing here is, first of all, to 
uh, help the member states understand, for example, why there is a need for a formal education on informatics. So that's one thing that we can do, Angel, and we can propose uh, to the member states to be involved in the studies that I mentioned. Uh, and perhaps they will conclude themselves that this is important, but we are not in the position to, to impose this. Uh, and this is very important. And in Spain, I think even less because the, in Spain, I think we're talking about a, a, a regional structure, just like in Germany or in Austria. In any way, that's not the, the, the intention. And um, the only thing that we can do in this, and, um, and I think we can, we can be successful in this over the long run, is to provide data, evidence, and good arguments to the politicians um, who um, are under pressure to um, help their, let's say, education and, and training systems and their population more generally to arrive to the conclusion that this is a good idea. I think that this is what the EU can do, um, but not, uh, not much more in terms of uh, directives, um, etc. cetera. Um, so, um, how can we teach AI without first teaching logic and some, some statistics? Um, well, um, probably we can't. Um, I cannot uh, answer you that question, but uh, our proposal is to develop uh, ethical guidelines on uh, artificial intelligence, which are targeted at educators and trainers. So this is uh, precisely what, uh, what we are proposing. We are not proposing uh, to teach AI. In fact, uh, we are proposing to develop ethical considerations of um, um, teaching AI and of using AI in education and training. This is what we are proposing in the, uh, in the action plan. Um, and then uh, how do you see, yeah. So, 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 sorry, Georgi, let, let me interrupt you because we will have a, a, a more time for a okay. question at the end of the next talk. So let's, uh, I mean, first of all, thank you for uh, uh, your, your presentation and thanks to the um, audience for having listened and, and apologize for those that have <coughs> written questions that we cannot take now, but we will take uh, uh, later. And uh, I, I will now give the floor to my colleague, Michael Kaspersen, for the introduction of the next uh, uh, speaker. Yes, thank you, Enrico. Uh, our next speaker is, as you see here on the slide, Martin, Martin Zachariasen, Rector or Vice Chancellor of the IT University of Copenhagen in Denmark. The IT University, which is only 20, 21 years old and probably the youngest university in Europe, was one of the founding members of Informatics Europe. Martin is uh, a native of Faroe Islands, has a background as a full professor in computer science. Um, he has substantial experience with academic management. Martin was previously has served as chair of the CS department at University of Copenhagen and Dean at the Faculty of, Faculty of Science at University of Southern Denmark. Now, the IT University in general and Martin Sagarisen in particular is strongly dedicated to improve informatics education at all levels, as well as diversity in informatics education and research. Uh, Martin's uh, keynote has the title Informatics Education Research first class citizen in the informatics departments. Uh, please all join me in welcoming Martin Zacharias. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, I will uh, share my screen here. Um, and I can start it up here. I hope you can, uh, can see it. So let me just go back. Can you see the screen? Okay. So thank you very much. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to, uh, we, to we, give we this. Are, uh, Martin, yeah, we cannot see it yet, so. Oh yeah, I need to share, sorry. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll try again, just a moment. Um, yeah, thanks. Does that work? Okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Um, it's, a, it's a great pleasure for me and thank you for inviting me to give this uh, lecture, uh, Michael. And uh, as you said, I'm, uh, I'm a, originally a researcher and now a manager, but very interested in the whole aspect of uh, digital education at, at all levels. And I'm going to say a little bit about uh, my main topic is uh, information uh, education research, but I'm also going to say a bit more about the status in particular in Denmark on this uh, subject. So first, let me give you a little bit of background, at least so you can know my perspective on this um, 
firstly, uh, let me see if I can make a change here. Yes. Um, so um, to me, uh, what, why are digital competences so important? I mean, this is something you have discussed a lot, but I just want to give you three perspectives on this. And these are quite important uh, when we look at, uh, uh, at, at the area as, as, as a whole. There are, to me, three uh, kind of ways you can look at why uh, these competences are important. First, the societal or, or citizen perspective, uh, because the world is becoming digital and we need to make sure that all citizens can be part, be part of a digital democratic society. Uh, then second is one also I've been very interested in is, is the uh, some called economic, but also called future of work perspective. Uh, namely that all uh, jobs uh, will uh, be um, working, every, every job will have a, you can say a digital component uh, in the sense that, that most of us in the future uh, will work together with computers. Most of us do it already. Uh, but um, but even more and, and more surprisingly than we, we, we believe, uh, and we can see it already now, of course, uh, normal teachers uh, use digital technologies. Uh, we also have nurses, but we also, in other places like uh, craftsmen, those who are builders and so on, they are also more and more using digital uh, technologies for, uh, for, for their work and, new, and in production and so on and so forth. So this is what we're going to see that humans will work very tightly with, uh, with computers. And then the third one, which is also the one we usually are at least saying in Denmark, the technology is coming. Uh, we are using more and more data, uh, computation networks. Uh, we have artificial intelligence coming and so on. This is simply transforming uh, education, transforming our business and society. Um, but there are a few uh, challenges. And, and I think they have been illustrated here, although a lot of work has been done, but I think much more work uh, is needed. Uh, first of all, if you talk about this as a research field, uh, we are not quite sure what, it, what it's all about, to be honest. Uh, we do not fully understand what digital competences are. At least when you see discussion in Denmark on, on various levels, and particularly when you get to the political level, it's getting very confusing. Um, and uh, we can some of the terms you see here, at least are used internationally, some of them are more or less uh, known. I mean, digital literacy, digital empowerment, computation thinking, computation empowerment, we could continue probably. Um, I don't think I'll go into detail with them right now, but uh, just to, you can say the, the digital component is maybe more about using, understanding, critical thinking in, in, in connection to digital technologies. And we, if you compare literacy with empowerment, then empowerment is, is more to be make uh, people able to participate actively uh, in the digital society. Uh, and, uh, and, and literacy will be more maybe about uh, critical thinking and using information in a safe way. Um, and and very, one very important thing we can see in Denmark is that now Denmark is, as you may know, uh, uh, currently on top of the ranking list in, in, in use of IIT in the public sector. We have a lot of digital services for, for the citizens and they are used a lot, but we still have uh, citizens. I think this last number I saw was around 10% of all citizens are not really able to use uh, digital services for one reason or another. And we also see that when things get complicated, uh, many citizens, uh, they are even though are able to use the cell services and so on, they, they prefer to take a, uh, take a call on the phone. Uh, to, to get help with, with using all these different systems. They are not very, always very good, very integrated. So just making sure that you could become a citizen in the digital world is, is, is one thing. If you look at the computational part, that, that's more to me the, the creative or, or building, the building stuff, you can say modeling, uh, and, and it's also more for, for uh, typically for more proficient, proficient users. Uh, but it's something that is becoming more and more important as, as a core, you can say core discipline uh, core discipline or a core part of informatics. And, and the challenge is at the moment, at least that uh, there's not a, a, a clear uh, and, 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 and precise common understanding of these terms, uh, even in the, in the research field. Then I will just mention the second challenge. Uh, I think you all know that I'll go through it quickly, but it's something you will easily forget, uh, namely that the technology develops rapidly and, and the general education develops slowly. Um, and the general education is part of the democratic process. It's something that needs to be decided what the young children should learn in primary school and also in secondary school in Denmark at least is something that has to be decided. It has to be decided politically. So it's a slow process. 
Uh, and I had just compared two quotations here from uh, the, the famous one from Moore's Law, just to say that technology, at least in some areas, moves extremely quickly and the capacity of, of technology. Uh, but the second quote is in, in more recent. Uh, so Shana Supov uh, come quite famous about uh, uh, writing about uh, some of the big tech companies and how they, they use our information for commercial use. Uh, she's, uh, she has this uh, citation, I, I, I quote, I like a lot about democracy is slow and that's a good thing. Uh, its pace reflects the tenets of millions of conversations gradually stirring the sleeping giant of democracy into action. It's a beautiful quote. But just to say that uh, the democracy will always be a little, be behind uh, the technology. Yeah. And the third one, which is also mentioned, which is uh, very relevant for this uh, workshop as a whole, is that the women are underrepresented in informatics or at least in tech as such. Um, Last numbers I heard in Denmark, at least, was that uh, fewer than one third of all IT or ICT jobs in Denmark were were, were, were women. Women. So, uh, and and this is a problem for many reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a huge uh, demand for digital competences, and in particular, IT specialists, IT professionals. So, it's uh, just recruiting for mainly from half of the uh, talent pool is a serious waste of talent, to be honest. Uh, and then the second point, which is not to be underestimated, is that uh, the informatics uh, is, is a key force in the digital transformation of society. So it plays a, a, a huge role for everybody in society. And therefore, it's, it's important that these digital services, digital artifacts, uh, are created by, by more than uh, a representative part of the population. So they sh we should have, uh, should have a broad, diverse representation when we create these really, really important technologies. And then uh, there's also quite clear that women are, uh, because they are underrepresented, they are missing out on some opportunities. Um, there's no doubt that a career in informatics gives uh, huge opportunities, uh, has a lot of job flexibility, which is uh, something that uh, women of, often appreciate, as, as you probably can imagine, but also very good lifetime earnings, uh, which is not, not underestimated. So these are some of the reasons why we need to work, and, and we have done at our university a huge effort to attract more uh, women to uh, our studies. And we, uh, this year we were uh, managed to get more than 25% uh, uh, of the new students in software engineering, they were, were female, uh, which is, is, uh, is much better than it was a few years ago uh, when it was below 10%. Uh, it's about the same on computer science. Uh, but, and, and we also see an increase in Denmark in general and probably around Europe. I know this is very different across the countries in Europe. But this is at least a, a general challenge for, for, for Denmark. So, um, so what is the status? And I will just give you a brief introduction uh, to what, what is the situation in Denmark regarding informatics education, just to put it in perspective. I think this is important. Um, there's uh, in primary school, which in Denmark is from the first to the ninth grade, um, we have just uh, had a, a new informatics subject coming up. Um, it was actually with the Michael, uh, uh, was, was one of the of the experts involved in this, another one was uh, Ole Sae Iversen from Aarhus University uh, to design this uh, this subject. Uh, and it has four competency areas here. I will uh, not go through the details, but we can almost discuss them about digital empowerment, uh, uh, making sure that you are able to critically use uh, digital services or understand the, the digital world. But it has also to do with the creative part, digital design, uh, the modeling part, computational thinking, uh, and then also programming and use of computers and so on. Uh, and this is something that is uh, currently a big, uh, rather big pilot test running at the moment in, in 46 schools in Denmark, a three-year experiment. And it has been designed so that in uh, half of the schools, it will be a standalone subject. And in half of the schools, it will be integrated into other subjects. And the idea is then to compare and see how, this, uh, how the competences will develop. Uh, uh, when, uh, depending on which of these uh, uh, models we use. And um, it's important to say that politically has not been decided yet uh, what should happen after uh, 21. Um, we are of course hoping uh, that the politician will decide that this will be a, a permanent subject uh, in all schools. And this will be a huge uh, upscaling. Uh, I think the number of schools in Denmark is around 1000 or a bit less perhaps. Um, so with that, that requires a huge upscaling, and this is under in process. The universities and also the university colleges, those that educate the teachers in primary school, have gone together to build uh, to build capacity, you can say, and to to make sure that we can be able to to build a pipeline for educating teachers and uh, to design the new curriculum and so on. So uh, 
Um, Michael is, is involved in that, and many, many researchers across the universities in Denmark are also involved in that project. But at, for now, it's mostly on paper, uh, and, and we're currently trying to find a, a substantial amount of funding for, for doing this capacity building. Uh, I think it's a really necessary, really important uh, project that's going on. Um, and also in, in connection to that, uh, I'll mention that later also, but also to build uh, a, a national knowledge center that is also aligned with what was mentioned before uh, about a digital education uh, hub, uh, uh, which is something that is also we, we think about doing in, in Denmark. Uh, and that could be a good way to collaborate also, uh, also in Europe. And then if you look at um, uh, secondary school, what we call high school in Denmark, or can be also other uh, similar institutions, uh, we had a subject almost 10 years ago now that was uh, introduced uh, called informatics. Before that, we had uh, a various, uh, various courses, uh, some computer science, something called information technology. Uh, and it was not very popular as such, and it was decided to, to make a more uniform uh, model for, for, for this subject. And it, it has uh, the content you can see here. It's a more or less classical, you can see computer science uh, along the way. Um, has also some uh, some aspects about innovation, um, you can see in the last, but also some more broad perspective on, on the use of technology in society. Technology in society. Um, and it is unfortunately, you can say, only mandatory this course in, in one of four tracks in high schools in Denmark. It's the course, so called business track, and it's uh, semi mandatory on what we call the classical and technical tracks. And the classical is by far the largest. So. It's a pity that we have not reached political support for that, but I know uh, Michael is also has been working to uh, to with that and and, uh, and myself to 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 push on to 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 make uh, this this subject uh, mandatory uh, in, in in every high school in Denmark. <clears throat> and uh, in order to do that, um, it's obviously necessary to uh, to have some further education ready, so so we can qualify the teachers to edu to to educate the. the the high school uh, uh, pupils and um, Aarhus University together with other universities in Denmark has just uh, um, just opened a, a new we call master in informatics teaching which is a further education that can be used for teachers at high schools um, and it's 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 done in a collaboration with six of the eight universities in Denmark involved in that my own university also and the first students were admitted this autumn so this, this is quite exciting and and hope it's, it's going to, to go well. Uh, I also see that this, <clears throat> this it also thought that this, this can be used for, for primary school teachers as, as well. Uh, but it, it, that depends a little bit on how, how this subject informatics moves uh, for the future. Okay, so let me now move to the, uh, so where are we now in, in, when it comes to research um, and, and information, um, informatic education research in Denmark? Uh, I would say it's a, it's a quite mixed bag. Um, here I listed, uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, the five, should we say, research centers that are more or less uh, doing research in this area, uh, at least quite focused on that. But they, have, they were different ways of approaching the, the, the problem. And I will just very quickly uh, go through. The first one on digital education is mainly for, mainly for digital education in science, uh, science STEM educations or mainly science. The sec second one is more, uh, which is called the Center for Computational Thinking and Design, is, is based in, in more uh, information science, uh, but also with, with the people from computer science involved in that. Uh, third one from the University of Southern Denmark is also cross-disciplinary, uh, but more from the communication side, but also from, a, from arts, you can say it's, it's anchored there. Um, and the fourth one uh, from uh, Olpoi is also uh, from uh, anchored in, in arts, uh, but also with connections to computer science. And the last one, which I'll say a little bit more about, is from for my uh, my own university. We have we are going to have an opening soon. I'll get back to that in just just two seconds. An opening of a center called Computing Education Research, uh, which uh, is based in computer science, but also goes across the two other departments we have at our university in digital design and business IT. And uh, just to give you an idea of what that research center is going to work on, is uh, to me quite classical and quite broad. Um, here are the research questions we would like to look at. Firstly, to understand what digital competences are, uh, to how to teach digital competences. And if I say what they are, we mean at all levels from, should say, kindergarten to, to lifelong learning, uh, how to teach it. And thirdly, how to apply and teach the competences in other disciplines, how to integrate it with other disciplines. And then we have two supplementary um, 
uh, research areas is also the gender or minority inclusion, which we find uh, important. So how do we actually design curricula and so on so that, that make sure that we can, we can include uh, both genders, you can say, and other minorities. Um, and also there is a connection to online teaching, of course, learning and so on, but that's not the core uh, of the research center. Uh, and one of the activities that's current in the center is uh, a so-called technosophicum project uh, where we would like to provide teachers at higher education institutions, that means universities and, and similar, with the necessary digital competences to teach their own discipline, because we, we also need uh, across the universities to be better at, uh, at teaching our own discipline and also change our discipline because of, uh, of the digital technologies that are coming. And the examples here are we have this pilot project with architects, lawyers, and also some uh, IT teachers uh, in, in a broad sense. And uh, we have a, a virtual opening uh, on, on the 5th of uh, November. Uh, you are most welcome. There will be a live stream uh, on the address you can see here, ccer.itu.dk. So you're welcome to, uh, to listen in on, on that on the 5th at, at 1 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. So uh, I will conclude here with some, um, some a summary or some, some ideas. Um, so uh, first of all, it's clear, I think, at least to me and hopefully to this audience, uh, that informatics is already transforming uh, every discipline. It's transforming society, but also transforming all disciplines. And this goes across, as you mentioned, before, it's really important to say this goes across uh, further than science and technology. It goes into all disciplines. Um, and uh, programming or coding uh, is, is now uh, appearing as a new communication form. Uh, I think it's phrased in a really elegant way to say that we need to learn to code, but we also need to code to learn. So we can also use coding uh, in, in our learning processes. And to me, uh, it's important that we can bring uh, three types, three groups of researchers together in the future. Uh, the first group is, is classical didactics researchers uh, that have an interest in informatics, informatics education. And, and there are very few of these, at least in Denmark, uh, we have only a handful or so, I would say, that really are working in this area. Uh, Michael can correct me, but I think that's about it. Um, number two is to, to uh, appeal to informatics or computer scientists that have an interest in didactics and to bring them on board. And the third one is to bring uh, other disciplines on board, uh, other researchers who would like to develop uh, didactics for bringing the use of informatics into their field and their education. And this is happening across many fields, uh, but we need to bring more uh, other disciplines on board. And my proposal could be, and it's something we can discuss, uh, could, could Informatics Europe, jointly with other disciplines, uh, provide recommendations on the integration of informatics into other disciplines? So here is here's some, and it, this is, nearly, we can see already now, it's going to be quite differ, different, uh, varied, depending on the discipline, how informatics plays a role in that discipline or uh, that uh, relevant uh, education. So, but I think it would be fantastic if Informatics Europe could, could, we could bring uh, good people together to to come up with uh, recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, I, the, the, there are some open questions in, in the query and answer. Uh, and um, Michael, if you agree, we can uh, take the one of Mary, Mary Webb. Mm -hmm. Yes, Which I suppose you can see it, Martin. Yeah, I have it here, yes. Um, and uh, so a, yeah, at the bottom, yes, I can see it, yes. Uh, the pilot project. Um, yes, how, how the project is led in each school, and do we have specialist teachers? Uh, no, that, that, is, that is the problem. As I said, the, uh, the capacity building is, is really important. Um, also in this pilot project, uh, they needed to do some capacity building or competence development for the teachers uh, who are involved uh, in this project. So that has been part of that project to also build up competences among the teachers out in, in the schools. Uh, so that the, that's the, has been the model and they, those teachers can then be come up to some level and then they can also teach the other teachers at, at, the, at their school. Uh, so, uh, so that has been the model so far, uh, but, but that, that is uh, clearly uh, the, the challenge also when we're going to scale it up to all schools in Denmark. Obviously, there is a hen and egg problem here, <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's it's really difficult to. Well, in the UK, um, this topic was introduced in school without training teachers at all, 
uh, in, in Denmark, this, there is now this trial subject running for three years with very little preparation of teachers, but at least some. Uh, and these things need to go hand in hand. We cannot wait for, for uh, capacity building to be properly in place until we actually implement this in school. So this is really uh, a tough uh, and, and classical example of a hen and egg problem. But uh, going and developing these things hand in hand and with the realization that uh, we need to develop this over a period of say 10 years or so is, is important also for, for politicians and decision makers to realize. Okay, so thanks, Martin, for uh, for your speech, and again, an, a virtual applause uh, to you. And we can now enter the the, the final uh, query and 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 uh, and answer session um, with questions uh, to, to to all uh, speakers. And uh, before giving the floor to Judith Galizer, that had a question uh, since the the, the the first session, um, I, I I just would like to 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 make a remark uh, which applies uh, in some sense to, to the to the Georgi Dimitrov talk but I think m more in general also also to us um, th th there is a, I think there is a problem with language in this area which is something that we in part we have created but uh, in part we, um, we, we we could not avoid and uh, which which then uh, affect uh, our our action above and affect our influence on politicians. So this this fact uh, of uh, speaking about uh, digital skills or computational thinking of informatics uh, makes the the, the 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 scenario a bit blurry, which is something that other science do not have. I mean, in physics that's physics, in biology that's biology and uh, mathematics that's mathematics so i think we, sh we, we i mean I, I know that simplicity i mean can 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 hide something but i think at least in in the language uh, we, we have to be very clear in uh, pushing forward toward the use of this term informatics which is agreed in europe to denote the scientific discipline first uh, and uh, before every operational application so this is only my remark. We will come back to this later. And so now, uh, Judith uh, Galizer, uh, okay, you, you are uh, open your microphone, please, so that you can pose your question. Okay, you hear me? Yeah. And yeah. you can also see me if you allow. No, okay. So, can you allow me to? uh show myself or is it just this i i think we can uh, enable your video i guess it's uh, the 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 Good. okay but okay i'll talk like this okay okay i don't know but... if you see me is it see my but we we are you we are you judith so please go uh, on okay so uh, th thank you very much thank you for the uh, very interesting presentations uh, thank you enrico for inviting me for this session i am um, actually i don't have a question i want to say a few comments uh, uh, we have here Two different, uh, two different subjects, the subject of digital studies and the subject of informatics that we all understood already. Uh, when we saying inform we want to introduce informatics into schools, we don't want to, to uh, have a professional graduates. Mm -hmm. We not necessarily want the graduates of high school go into industry. We want to give them some basic of the of the discipline, same as you mentioned the other scientific disciplines, so that if they choose to uh, go in higher education, they can choose what to learn with some knowledge of what they they already know, and and this is very important. On the other hand, we have the digital studies. This is. This, with this, we have to do something immediately. And this goes back to what uh, Wendy was asked about uh, 
a teach, I think when they was asked about the, the, what COVID-19 did and what we have, what changes we have to do in our programs. We definitely have to do some uh, changes in teachers' uh, study program or teachers' certificates. Teachers today had no idea, uh, not all of them, but many, had no idea of how to teach via Zoom how to teach online and now in all the uh, all the certificate programs or study or teacher study programs we should integrate this element and teach them and help them we now in israel we now run a series of uh, of uh, presentations lectures of all kinds to teach teachers of schools and teachers of university because we have everything now only online how to do things and this is a major change i don't say that universities will change what maybe people say it i don't say it but they will need to have more tools uh, to to teach and these are and now i saw one question um, if we can teach in from uh, people who already know informatics and uh, teach them the pedagogy and the uh, teaching method and turn them into uh, school teachers. We tried this in Israel. There are some that are doing well, but uh, most of them leave after a maximum of five years because they find it very difficult and much more difficult than working in industry. Enrico, just yep. stop me whenever you want because I can't okay. forever. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, no. You, but your 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 testimony about Israel is important because Israel is a country that has taken the issue of. I mean, you use computer science in your country to yes. to, to do the, not these disciplines. They have a computer science in schools since many many years, yeah. and I think it is also because of this that their uh, IT industry is uh, very well. Uh, reputed all over all over the world and uh, the, the the research community in, in uh, computer science uh, of people coming from israel is is, is very strong uh, in all in all fields of uh, of computer science yeah. now and, i'm blushing no 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 <laughs> I, it, it's the truth <laughs> and actually this this is uh, this is important because it reinforces my comment uh, before that there are some i mean i have been seeing uh, i mean First of all, I'm really happy about the, the fact that this, this new digital education action plan, we finally see the, 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 the expression informatics or computing or computer science. I mean, we yes. have been uh, suffering, let's say, because in the past 10 or 20 years uh, in, in, in the European Union, they only spoke about uh, digital skills or digital competence. So yes, this, is, this change is clearly a, 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 a good one. But on the other side, I mean, if we look of what happens in other parts of the world, both in the East and in the West, we see a much more emphasis put in uh, informatics as a science beyond yeah. the, the operational competences, which, is, which, which I think is, is, is really good because in some sense, I mean, it is true that the operational competences are important, but once you know the science behind, then the operational competence, you can develop them. And the, we know that in our field, operational competences change, uh, if not year to year, I mean, uh, five years in five years, everything, everything changes. So uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is really important. And it, I, I, mean, I, I know that Georgi Dimitrov know this issue very well because it's years that we are talking with him about, uh, about this, uh, this element. And I hope that in the future, the European Union can do more progresses in this uh, in this direction yeah um, uh, maybe one one thing if you if you allow me to praise israel we we say that there are four elements that make it we have to have a for informatics we have to have a, a well-established uh, curriculum we have a, a, a teacher study program a mandatory uh, teacher certificate from uh, demanded from the uh, Ministry of Education and research. Without yeah. research, nothing can make any progress. Okay. Thank you. Th th thank you. Thank you, uh, Judith.
And I, I don't know if, Georgi, you want to comment or say something? Yeah, yes, if you allow me, just a yes, very, sure, very, sure. very brief comment. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Judith also for raising this um, tension between the digital studies and, uh, and, uh, and the, the computer science or informatics. And I think that um, I would like to, to just make it very, very clear that uh, we are uh, coming uh, with this digital education action plan in order to address the role of, of education in the digital transformation. So obviously informatics is very, very important for us, but um, the, the key objective is to, to support the longer term um, uh, let's say, uh, and we are not the, the the ones that are defining the you know the the, the content of, of informatics education at whatever level. So I just want to to again just clarify in terms of what we can do. Now to, uh, another very short comment, Enrico, if you allow me. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we have provided now the translations of the Digital Education Action Plan in 23 languages. And if you go there and look, for example, at the German translation, or you look at the Italian translation, you you're going to see that we're speaking primarily of informatic or infor you know whatever is it in Italian or in l'informatique so uh, I just want to say that this whole thing is of course it's a language problem but you know we know from Wittgenstein that there are lots of kind of uh, confusions there possible we are working in, in English here and we are using primarily the the term that is established in English but if you go and check and I invite you to do that for example the German version then you're going to see that we're talking about informatic Unterricht. So we are really talking about the term as it is. So you, we need to use the language whenever it's, you know, it, it fits the purpose. I, of course, take your underlying point that we need to arrive at the clarity of what is the concept. But of course, informatics uh, is not as old as mathematics. So there are also some other uh, sciences, I would say, that have kind of multiple titles. And I think this probably is even enriching them. Uh, could be enriching them because this is, I mean, in, informatics is, is so important and it, it will be evolving over time. So I think some level of perhaps uh, tolerating this multi multitude would also be helpful going forward. Um, at least we see it that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Um... Uh, we have we have a, okay we have a question in, in in the query and answer we have a question for martin can buy from luca aceto can you read it martin yes i can read it um <clears throat> yeah i think the answer is, is yes uh, that uh, the, the impact i hope will be that we we can contribute to uh, understanding, as I said, and clarifying what com digital competences are and putting, uh, also advising curriculum, building curriculum, building uh, teaching, you can say components, modules, and so forth that can be used across all levels. That kind of direct, we would like to have direct contributions uh, to that. Uh, also, recently, we had just worked, they are, they, the, the researchers are working on, on the gender issue also. So how do you best teach this? So, for example, you can make sure that girls... Uh, uh, become interested and stay interested in the field uh, so they also choose uh, an education later on. Uh, things like that is something we would like to work on. So it's definitely best practices uh, quite uh, going not, not only to understand things but also to, to help uh, changing uh, the situation uh, in Denmark and also across the world. Okay, thanks Martin. Uh, so, so, sorry Judith, I would like to... to, to, to... Okay. To, to say one more thing, I mean, we are coming close to, to the end, but there was one topic that was raised in, in a previous session that it is really important, I think, both for the community and I think also for the European Commission, which is the issue of communication and dissemination. I mean, be, beyond the, 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 the problems caused to, 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 to our continent by the 30 or 40 languages that, uh, that, uh, that we speak, there is the problem that people do not understand what informatics is. I mean, and uh, politicians, uh, men and women on the streets, uh, journalists, so everybody understand what they want to understand. So dissemination and communication is highly important at, uh, and we as a community are not doing enough in this area. I mean, we should be writing books on dissemination as a, I think, it, yeah, it was, it was a question by Jack Vilo uh, earlier. I mean, where is the Feynman of, of computer science? But it's not just the Feynman because, I mean, we have one or two examples of uh, good dissemination in computer science. The problem is that they are just one or two. I mean, if you go in any bookstore, you can see 
dozens or maybe 100 books on mathematics on biology or on astronomy or physics and every field has their own book. And for informatics, you just see how to program in Python, how to query SQL and things like this. So this is, this is wrong, but this is our fault. I mean, our fault as a, as a community, we have to do more in this, in this, uh, in this area and reward people that is doing more. And I mean, I dream of, of, of a prize for dissemination in computer science that uh, may come from European Union. I mean, which is difficult because of course, if you want to do dissemination in French, you have to write a book in French and in Italy for Italians and, uh, and uh, in Spanish for, uh, for Spain. So th this is a, a problem uh, even more difficult that for, from the, for the United States where they speak the same language. So doing dissemination is hard, but it is absolutely important that we recognize this is a problem, we invest in it, and if the European Commission can help on this, uh, this would be really, really, really good. Uh, Michael, you wanted to, to say something, yeah. Michael. Yes, sure, and just, just um, following up on, on what you just said about dissemination, Enrico, I think we as, as specialists in this area have uh, the responsibility to not create this Tower of Babel with terminology and everything. We need to really to uh, clarify terminology and simplify matters so that it becomes obvious when we talk about informatics and when we talk about ICT or digital skills and whatsoever. Um, um, I have a, I think, a, a um, concrete proposal uh, for you, Georgie, um, and for the European Commission. Um, we are uh, ready and prepared, as Enrico already said, uh, and underlined to contribute to, to the efforts that you have planned, uh, that are planned by the European Commission uh, for, for the future coming years. But uh, as a very concrete additional thing, I would like to suggest that our efforts with which uh, Wendy Hall talked about with uh, developing a, a, an informatics curriculum framework, that we think about this in the same line as uh, this uh, actually very excellent digital competence framework that has been developed over the past I don't know what, 15 years almost. I think uh, this work started back in, in, in 2004, five, six, uh, about that. And, and now we have a uh, 2.1 version. And you mentioned, Georgie, that another updated version will be initiated soon. Uh, this digital competence framework is a very well and carefully laid out document that describes five competences and, and eight stages of, of development or, or expertise of those. And I could imagine that we undertake the challenge of, of providing a complementary EU informatics uh, competence framework, which along the same lines uh, underlines what is important as this fundamental discipline that, uh, that Wendy talked about uh, in her presentation. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, we, there is one final question by Don Passe. Um, it's the last one we can take because we are two minutes uh, to the end of the session. Uh, and I think Martin, uh, I think you, this is the, 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 the perfect question for you because it regards uh, other kind of diversity in informatics. Yeah, to how, how to uh, integrate and support diversity uh, in general. Um, yeah, I, I can I can just just give you an example because I was just uh, in, in uh, it it uh, it has to do how we uh, for how we teach uh, how we teach things and what examples we use in our teaching. Uh, and in, in, in informatics, uh, it's it's a question about do you phrase problems as as, as a people oriented uh, problem or a things oriented problem. Uh, and this this has a big effect on on how motivated uh, the, the pupils or, or students are. So just the, the way you phrase and the way you work with with, with problems, work with uh, things, uh, education wise, can can definitely have a big effect. And also the the language uh, as as such, uh, the the role models and so on. We have from from our university just in order to recruit more uh, female students, we haven't able to. You need to change everything from. From our, the language we use on our homepage to to the pictures examples we use, 
and, and the way we describe uh, what job functions, so what, what can you do when you finish your studies and so on. There are a lot of things you need to work with to make sure that everyone feels, uh, feels welcome and uh, integrated into that, so. Okay, so Georgi, any final comment from you? Um, I would like to thank you, Enrico, and the community for inviting me for, for I think, the third or fourth time again here. I hope that it is um, helpful for, for your work, which I appreciate a lot, especially the discussions, because they are always very direct and very, uh, very engaging. And we don't always agree, but uh, it's, it's a joy for me to be, uh, to be here. Um, as you know, I have a little bit of computer science in, in my history, so uh, I, I like to, to listen to you and to learn from you. So good luck to, for all your work. One word on, um, on the comment of Michael, uh, Michael on, on the um, uh, possible EU informatics framework. I think this is an excellent idea. So I would suggest that we discuss this whenever uh, we have the opportunity to do so. And I think that this could be something that could be concretely developed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, full support for your um, communication and dissemination efforts. Whenever we can uh, help, we are glad to do so. Uh, all the very best to all of you and the, um, the participants here. Thank you. Okay, and okay. thanks, thanks, thanks again, uh, Georgi, for your availability. And I mean, uh, disagreement and differences are the salt of life, so we, we always welcome them. And uh, I will now approach the end of the of the um, session, uh, reminding you that we will have uh, uh, other session on diversity in in the course of. Uh, next two days uh, so please stay with us uh, um, in, uh, going uh, going forward and we will now be showing uh, a, a poll on, uh, on, uh, on on screen it's just two questions so please uh, uh, answer and we as a panelist of course we cannot answer but you as attendees uh, you are able uh, you are able to answer. And then, uh, while you uh, answer to this poll, I'll um, just remind you that uh, uh, the afternoon session will start at uh, two o'clock, and is uh, what we call the leaders' uh, workshop, uh, because it's the place where we, we uh, have uh, leaders of group of uh, faculty of departments uh, uh, to discuss together a common uh, common issue. This, so this will start in two, and please, uh, to all attendees, uh, um, take note of the fact that uh, it will be a, a, another uh, link, a different uh, Zoom session, and uh, the link uh, is shown here. You should have received also in your email. It is also in the chat. So uh, the, 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 the main issue is please remember this afternoon, the link is going to be different than, uh, than today. I think that uh, now it's, uh, we can declare the first session over. Thanks again to, to everybody. Have a nice lunch and see you again in the afternoon. Bye.